Good morning, everybody. Let's talk about the speaking skills in today's video. Language learning is basically a skill that has to be mastered with constant exposition to the language. Along with practicing it meticulously and mastering its skills of listening, speaking, reading and writing. L-S-R-W. Don't you think that is how a child picks up the mother tongue? Continuously, a child is exposed to the parents talking to the child, the grandparents talking to him or her, the elders around him or her talking. And slowly, after listening to the language for sufficient amount of time, he or she tries to pick up the sounds. That is how he or she starts speaking. With the patting of the elders and parents, and also with the motivation of them, slowly these sounds are combined into the meaningful words, and the words later into sentences. And that is how a child picks up the language. So it's always the listening first, and then followed by the speaking of the language. After the child has completely picked up the listening skill and the speaking skill in a particular language, especially the mother tongue, then he or she is put into school where he develops the reading skill as the third important skill, wherein the child tries to identify in terms of sounds, in terms of letters and in terms of writing the words that he already has mastered. After the reading, then comes the writing, whereupon he masters the writing skill of practicing it by writing on a slate or on a piece of paper. So it's always the listening first, speaking, and then write reading, and then writing. L as R, giving rise to writing. And of these skills, listening and reading are called as passive skills because these skills are intrapersonal communication to the own self. In spite of the fact that listening and reading are intrapersonal and only a person knows a person who is listening to something or reading a book or a piece of paper, only he or she knows how much amount of comprehension has taken place after listening to the text or after reading a text. Though the listening skill and the reading skill can be tested by asking questions and allowing them to speak out the answers or maybe write on a piece of paper. So, speaking and writing skills are the testing skills to understand how much of comprehension has taken place while listening or reading by an individual. Essentially, listening and reading are intrapersonal. Only the person who listens to the text or the reads the text understands how much has been comprehended by him or her. Whereas, speaking and writing are called as the active skills. By active skills, we mean that they are the interpersonal skills. Interpersonal communication takes place. Because when we are speaking, we always have an audience with one or more people standing in front of us. Or maybe standing as an audience whenever we are speaking in the radio or maybe on a television with an expected audience. Similarly, when we are writing, we also address this piece of writing to a particular audience. So, speaking and writing are active skills whereupon we are understood by others. Whereas, listening and reading are the passive skills where we tend to understand whatever has been said to us or written to us. Speaking skill of all these skills are, is the most important one because it is the first sign to show that you know a language. When you go to a totally new place with new language, it is only with the help of speaking skill that you can connect with people and communicate to them. And listening is supposed to be automatic. And similarly, speaking is supposed to be developed in an automatic way. But nothing is automatic. It's a skill by its own which will have various steps to pick up, various techniques that we need to understand and we need to master in order to develop the listening skill and also the speaking skill. Nothing is automatic because it is a skill and skill will have some steps and these steps are to be followed in order to master them. Speaking is not given its due importance and proper training and it is supposed to be automatic. Just like listening is supposed to be automatic. Good listening definitely enables one to become good speaker and good speech ensures good reading and good writing. All are connected but every skill in the language development is 
to be properly trained and the techniques are to be understood in order to pick up the language efficiently. Maybe we don't give due importance to the listening and speaking techniques and that is the reason why we don't pick up a language like English in an efficient way in terms of speaking and also in terms of writing because no due emphasis is given to it, no proper training is given to it, no techniques are introduced to us and we consider that language learning is automatic. In spite of the fact that we pick up the language for 10 to 15 odd years in the school level and at the college level, many a times it becomes very difficult for us to speak properly and write properly. If we look at the sub-skills of uh, speaking, the number one sub-skill would be to produce the English speech sounds correctly. A language like English where there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between the letters of the language and the speech sounds. 26 letters are there in English A to Z but correspondingly we have 44 speech sounds. There is no one-to-one -one correspondence at all between the letter that we use and the sound that we make. This is not so in the Sanskrit derived Indian languages. In Marathi or Hindi or any Indian language, there is absolute relationship between the letter that we write with Hraswa or Dirgha and the pronunciation part of it. But this is not so with English. And mostly, the speech sounds only are not picked up properly or not taught to us properly. The differentiation that we have to maintain between sir and sure, f and p. The per sound and the aspirated per sound like p or t or k, t, t, k, k, p, p or the differentiation that we have to maintain between v which is a labiodental and v which is a labiovelar. Now this is added to the increased complications when we try to pick up the sounds that are related to vowel sounds. The short vowels and the long vowels like e, e, u, U, a, a, and a, a is to be absolutely maintained. Many a times the difference uh, that we have to maintain, especially while picking up the diphthongs. In the Indian languages, we have only two diphthongs like I and Ao. But in English, we have eight diphthongs. A as in gate, I as in wife. Oi as in oil, ow as in house, ow or o as in no, so, or maybe the following diphthongs like ua as in poor, ia as in cheer, and air as in air. These are different eight diphthongs that we are never exposed to and a mastery of these diphthongs is a must in order to pronounce these sounds effectively wherever they are used in the words. So the number one subskill of speaking skill is to produce the English speech sounds correctly. Get ourselves acquainted with English phonology number one. Know the articulation of each sound. Practice the examples of each sound and internalize these sounds so that we can pronounce them whenever they are used in the expressions. The second sub-skill is to use appropriate word stress and intonation patterns. All Indian languages are syllable timed languages. The syllables recur at regular intervals. Whereas English is a stress timed language where the stresses recur at regular intervals maintaining the rhythm of the language. Now, stress is something which we Indians don't know at all because of which we never maintain it in our speech. But stress is a permanent property of all English words, especially the content words like nouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs along with interrogative pronouns and demonstrative pronouns. These are permanent features which are marked as an apostrophe above and in front of the stressed syllables which can be shown in a dictionary as well. These are to be picked up by us. How can we do that? One way of doing is to refer to the dictionary and know as to whether the word is stressed or not and if it is stressed, which syllable will see the stress and practice it. Another way is to listen to the language as is spoken by the TV news readers or maybe through films, or maybe by listening to the songs and pick it up as a child picks up.
Supposing a Maharashtrian child has gone to America at the age of, say, two, he automatically picks up the American accent with the proper stress because he's continuously exposed to, to the native speakers, maybe around his house and even in the school that he goes to. And similarly is a child who picks up the UK accent or the Australian accent when he or she is placed in the environment because of the continuous exposure. The same technique is to be followed by us also. We should go on listening to the correct speech spoken by the native speakers or maybe by getting exposed to the speech of those news readers, those TV anchors, those films which are English based. Taking a great interest meticulously, we have to get ourselves exposed to it and make it a habit of picking up those sounds and practicing for it. English is well known not only for its word accent but also to maintain rhythm in it. And rhythm can be maintained when these words, which are called as the structural words, like articles, prepositions, conjunctions, Helping words and pronouns are reduced to their weak forms in order to maintain the musicality of English. First of all, we should know what the strong forms of these words are and then how these are reduced to their weak forms and also along with examples and practice the examples. This also can be done, the weak forms and the concept of weak forms can also be done by listening to songs, listening to native speakers, maybe through the TV channels or films. Along with vague forms and uh, stress, intonation is another important suprasegmental feature of English language, whereupon the utterances are given either the falling tone or the rising tone or the fall rise tone. And we need to get ourselves acquainted with all these by getting a proper exposure to it and picking it up and also practicing it. The third subskill of speaking is to select the appropriate vocabulary for the expression. Many a times we have the ideas in our mind. Maybe we know the answer to the question that is asked to us, but we cannot express it because of lack of vocabulary. To avoid such like problems, one good way is to get ourselves acquainted with more of the vocabulary of English. How do we do that? Number one way of picking up the vocabulary is to refer to the dictionary and meticulously every day 10 words are to be written in a piece of paper on the book, practiced for pronunciation and put them into use in sentences and use them in our day-to-day -day speech. Another way is to listen to one English news on a television because the news readers use different vocabulary, newly coined words and try to express and that is one way of picking it up or listening to the songs in English, listening to the speeches in English, listening to the films and watching films in English. All these are the ways of picking up vocabulary. To start with, we should start with a dictionary. Improved vocabulary and increase in the word list continuously practiced for six months to one year definitely help us to express in a better way. Now, this is an ongoing process. It should never stop after six months or one year, but it's an ongoing process to help us improve our vocabulary day by day. Because English is an evolving language and every day new words and new expressions are added into it and it is a part of ours to add up our vocabulary list as well. Then the next sub-skill will be to select the right language in order to suit the situation. Here comes the grammar part of uh, the language and the semantics of the language. Syntax is the grammatical rules that we pick up and semantics is the corresponding meaning that we express in order to meet with the situation. Along with phonology, morphology, syntax and semantics, the situational English is to be picked up. That is, our knowledge to use what expression to meet with what situation to different people. Along with situational language, the last subskill is to perform various functions using the language. The functional use of the language also is to be picked up. Which vocabulary items and expressions and grammatical items are to be used to meet with the right situation to express the right meaning is an art by its own, sorry, an art by its own and this skill is to be appropriately picked up 
and mastered. If these are the sub-skills of speaking, we need to train ourselves and pick up the appropriate techniques to develop the speaking comprehensions. What could be the techniques to develop the speaking comprehension? Question answers and lecturing and questioning are the two important techniques that we have been acquainted with. Question answers at the school level, lecturing and questioning at the college level. We need to listen to whatever has been explained in the classroom situation and answer appropriately to the questions that are asked by the teacher or maybe the speaker. Group discussion is a third technique of developing the speaking comprehension. We learn the group skills or the team building skills, leadership skills, along with developing various vocabulary items to express ourselves emphatically and to see that our point of view, if it is right, is to be, you know, emphasized on the others as well. Or sometimes we pick up or we listen to others and we change our point of view. Group discussion is a wonderful way of picking up the speaking skills. Continuously, we should be participating in the group discussions. Maybe a guided group discussion. Maybe a prepared group discussion where the topic is known to us well in advance. Or maybe the group discussion which is immediate where the topic is told to us just 10 minutes before and participate in the discussion. Presentations is another technique of developing the speaking skills. At the school level as well as the college level, various topics could be given to us and we need to present it either openly through speeches as presentation speech or through elocution whereupon the topic is known to us on the spot. And the presentations could be a direct speech or by using the ICT tools, using PowerPoint presentations and various videos and audio clippings and so on. Participating in the presentations will definitely help us to ease ourselves in using the language effectively. Seminars and paper readings could be another techniques of developing the speaking skills. By participating in various seminars related to a particular topic and presenting ourselves by following different presentation skills like paper reading or paper presentations or presentations through PPTs and ICT tools are wonderful ways of enhancing our speaking skills. All these will not only develop our speaking skill but also reduce the anglophobia, the phobia of using English language at various situations. Simulations and role plays are different other techniques advanced techniques of developing the speaking comprehension. The dialogues related to a particular situation are already made by the teacher or by the book and are given to them, read by the teacher, practiced for role plays by different students. Either the students in the role play will read out whatever is given to them or develop various other dialogues on their own, guided and then slowly moving towards free. And then a simulation could be given to them and by simulation we mean a situation is given to them, a topic is given to them, some time is given to the students to think about them and then the students without reading a piece of paper or without you know, having any idea about whatever is to be talked in that situation will come out with their dialogues. So role play is quite guided where a simulation gives a free hand to the user of the language. From the guided role play slowly the involvement or the participation into simulated situations will develop the speaking comprehension skills better. By organizing various tasks and games for the students in order to pick up the speaking skill is one among them. The games could be related to the grammar or maybe related to literature. So tell them the text of Othello and make them a simulated situation of Othello and Desdemona and allow them to participate. The simulated situation could be by allowing them to go into the society of the contemporary era and making a skit of it, narrating a story of it or participating in a, in a drama. All these are some wonderful ways of developing the speaking comprehension skills. Let us look into all these techniques of developing the speaking skill. The very first technique is to allowing the students or allowing the individuals to pick up the vocabulary of the familiar objects around. The very first place is our home, 
and then our school and then our society so introduce the students to various vocabulary items that are related to all the things surrounding first of all talking about the living room vocabulary the armchair sofa bookcase carpet chair chest of drawers clock coffee table cupboard curtain fireplace light mirror paintings and pictures plants shelves speakers added to this we can add television and various other accessories also talking about the bedroom vocabulary we can have a shelf a mirror a lamp a telephone uh, maybe a chest of drawers bed mattress bed covers pillows pillow covers bed spreads comforters pictures windows and curtains television fan light maybe the side tables uh, an ironing table a table for the computer with the stationary items all these could cover the bedroom vocabulary you can add to all the vocabulary items and see that you are comfortable with naming them in terms of words in terms of pronunciation as well talking about the kitchen vocabulary you have kitchen cabinet you have the presser you have the juicer you have the mixer you have a refrigerator along with um a ca casseroles ovens cupboards the cupboards having um glasses uh, mugs cups and saucers grills maybe a rice cooker maybe a dishwash dining table with the dining table chairs weighers and weighing machine and dustbins within the kitchen most of the students in the survey that we have made have been observed that these uh, vocabulary items are quite new whereas everybody uses it it becomes very difficult for us to name them like forks kitchen scissors chopsticks bowls measuring spoons bread of basket aprons grater cauldron a coriander sieve oven gloves napkins plates baking trays um spice containers chopping board frying pan casseroles and cookers pressure cookers whiskers rolling pin cleavage or cleaver a uh, chef's knife spoon strainer spatula i try to identify all these words which increases really the vocabulary of the individual now we move ahead to the garden with the gardener watering can boots gumboots the brakes the rakes butter bucket flowers garden plants vegetable garden with the storage house trees the dust bins or maybe the recycle bins rakes to clean it up or a lawn mower pond grass shovel saw a gardener fence hedge animals like cows and buffaloes and goats and sheep and so on and so forth get yourself acquainted to as much of vocabulary as possible in english which you are already covered with just get yourself acquainted with the vocabulary and the pronunciation so that your vocabulary increases now whatever is surrounding us then i had taken as an example as a hospital know everything about the hospital and the vocabulary of it wards visitors wheelchairs mask injection heart rate monitor stethoscope surgeon and surgery doctors and nurses gowns medical chart medication bed bed pressure monitor and so on and so forth the janitors there the cleaners there the managers there and the receptionist everything that is associated with the hospital the best way is to go to that place mark everything and know the vocabulary items of this memorize them and put them into use here are different places of shopping that we are acquainted with the cafe market bookshop candy shop music shop bakery shoe shop 
camera shop, donut shop, sports shop, restaurant, malls, clothes shop, computer shop, DVD rental shop, pet shop, green grocers, grocery shop, toy shop, gift shop, florist, and so on and so forth. Go into each shop. First of all, know what the shop is named as. Then get into each shop and then try to find out what each thing is named as. Note it down. Translate it into your respective vocabulary item, respective mother tongue. Memorize it and understand and put the words into usage. That's the best way to improve your vocabulary. The second speaking technique is getting ourselves acquainted with rhymes, chants and tongue twisters. Nursery rhymes are some beautiful ways of picking up vocabulary and the pronunciation. Tubby cheeks and dimple chin, rosy lips and teeth within, curly hair, very fair, eyes are blue, lovely too, teacher's pet, is that you? Yes, yes and yes. So you are not only getting yourselves acquainted with the vocabulary items, you are also training your mouth for pronunciation of it and songs are some beautiful ways rhymes and songs are some beautiful ways to pick up the vocabulary items effectively listen to this chant listen to me i'm listening listening listen to me i'm listening listening listen to me i am i am answer me i will i will answer me i will i will tell me the truth i will i will tell me the truth i will i will don't tell a lie, I won't, I won't. Don't tell a lie, I won't, I won't. Answer me, I will. Tell me the truth, I will. Don't tell a lie, I won't. Listen to me, I'm listening. So chants like this will definitely enable you to speak in a fluent way. I personally feel songs are some beautiful ways of picking up the correct rhythm of the language vocabulary of the language, pronunciation of the language with the right intonation. I have given you a website where you can find a number of songs in English, which you could keep on listening according to your own choice so that you can pick the English rhythm and intonation properly. Personally speaking, this is a very beautiful song that I have been listening to in my childhood, sung by my father. When I was just a child, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here is what she said to me. Ke sara, sara, sara. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Ke sara, sara. What will be, will be. When I grew up and fell in love, I asked my sweetheart, what lies ahead? Will we have rainbows day after day? Here is what he said. Ke sara, sara. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Ke sara, sara. What will be, will be. Now I have children of my own. They ask their mother, what will I be? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? I tell them tenderly. Ke sara, sara, sara. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Ke sara, sara. What will be, will be. Ke sara, sara. Now, songs like this not only help us to pick up the right pronunciation and language, but also get ourselves in, in, acquainted with various vocabulary items. In this song, we don't know what the word K-sara means. It's not, in fact, an English 
word. It's a Spanish word. And automatically we are acquainted with K, Sara. K is what and Sara is will be. Because there is an English translation also within the song. So this is one beautiful way of picking up rhyme, rhythm, intonation, weak forms, stress and also vocabulary. Along with an interest in singing. The singing in the English language. Tongue twisters are a beautiful way of picking up the language. We have been acquainted with a number of tongue twisters in the listening skill. And because it is a speaking skill, let me give you a new tongue twister along with these old that we already discussed. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper pecked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Interesting. Isn't it? Now, tongue twisters like this not only enable us to pick up the aspirated and unaspirated sounds in English, especially per sound here, it will practice us also for picking up the aspirated per. In a word like piper, the first per is aspirated, the second per is not aspirated. In a word like peck, Per is aspirated whereas ker, in spite of the fact that this is a plosive, is not aspirated. And similarly is with other words. So where these per ter ker sounds are aspirated, where the per ter ker sounds are not aspirated is a beautiful way of picking up when we use the tongue twisters like this. Practice for tongue twisters for uh, developing the speaking skill. The next speaking technique is back chanting. Whenever we, I talk about back chanting, I always remember the school days where we used to play this game. Where the teacher or a person will talk only, will pronounce only one word. And each one of us playing, here five learners and a teacher are there. The teacher has pronounced the word book. Each learner has to add only one word which goes be, before the word and make up a sentence. So book, a book. The second learner has added reading a book. The third learner has added is reading a book. The fourth learner has added man is reading a book. The fifth has added the man is reading the book. The moment the sentence is complete, all the learners together will say the entire sentence together. And the teacher would go to the next. Now the same example can be used by the same learners to pick up different words also. Book, the book. And then the third uh, learner or the second learner will add, uh, will add keep. Uh, the, th the fourth learner would add um, man. The fifth learner, the man. The man keeps the book. You have made a different sentence. Such like many different types of sentences can be made using just one word and the back chaining technique. The next technique is question and answers which are very very interesting. Just show them a picture and ask the questions. How many children are playing in this garden? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is the answer. Who is catching uh, the balloons? Immediately the answer is the boy with the red cap and blue shirt. How many balloons are there and what are the colors? Two balloons are shown in the picture. One is in blue color, the other is in orange color. How many kites are flying? Two kites are there. Tell the colors of it. Green kite which is bigger and the pink kite which is farther. How many birds are flying? Who is playing the xylophone? Who is blowing the trumpet? Do you find any creeping animal there on the picture? Who is sliding the slide? What shoes? What is the color of the shoes who is sliding the slide? Who is riding a tricycle? So all these questions and many more can be asked with respect to color, with respect to numbers, with respect to objects and so on and so forth. A number of questions can be asked and the answers that you are getting automatically make them train for listening to the proper forming of the questions and answering in a proper way. 20 question game where the answers that are expected are yes or no is a very beautiful game of you know, uh, making the person speak. Only 20 questions are to be asked and um, two persons should play. One is the one who asks the questions. The other is the one who answers the question. The one who is answering the question will automatically think about a person in his mind. 
and whatever person's name is been taught in the mind of the first person will be asked in 20 questions by the second person where the answer that is expected is only yes or no he cannot give a, a normal answer only yes or no and in this yes no type of answers that he is giving the second person has to guess the name of the person that the first person has thought about was the person born in asia no is the person very famous yes is the person an actor or an actress no is the person still alive yes is the person founder of a famous company no was the person born in 1990s no did the person finish the college in usa no so you are getting automatic clues that he is not a, a person who is born in 1990 he is still alive he is not an actor or an actress very famous not an asian Uh, did he, did not do his college in USA, so it is he is not an American. He is not an Asian. Is the person a famous singer? No, so not a singer. Male? Yes, you get a clue. Male. A person related to the sports? Yes. So you will be thinking about only those questions. Footballer? Yes. Midfielder? Fielder? No. European football club? Yes. Spanish pre Premier League? Yes. Handsome or beautiful look? Yes. person having big muscles yes person having brown hair no so you get many clues here will you have uh, will you be happy if you see the person yes does the person have any brother or sister in the family no and then is the person engaged in many charity activities not known with the 20 questions even before you finish your 20 questions you can guess it yes none other than lionel messi did you see the man here So this game is a very interesting game where only twenty questions you are allowed to ask. If you have practiced for it, not even twenty, within ten questions itself you can get the answer. It's a very beautiful way of making the people talk, asking the questions number one and also answering. So this could be checked for framing the questions also. And obviously, because the answer is yes or no, you will be framing all yes no type of questions. How best you can frame the yes no type of questions is the game about. flash cards is again another just show them all this you have a cube there you have a square there you have triangle you have cylinder you have a cross you have a heart you have oval uh, you have a star also now showing the flash cards whatever you have in the bottom yellow colored round so match it green colored triangle you don't have a green colored triangle here so you can say that we have a red color triangle but we can match it with the green color triangle we also can match it with the cone because that is 3d and this is 2d so a square and a rectangle also can be asked for not only the flash card technique could be used for shapes it could be used for colors it could be used for numbers it could be used for objects it could be used for sentences it could be used for fill in the blanks right or wrong flash cards are some beautiful you know technique that can be used for picking up anything in grammar and vocabulary for the students it all depends upon the creativity of the user surveys and interviews and participation in surveys and interviews could be one good way in which we can make uh, the person speak first of all frame the questions or maybe the teacher could help uh, to frame the questions can you tell me a little about yourself what are your strengths and weaknesses what type of work environment do you prefer where do you see yourself in 5 years how do you deal with pressure or stressful situations many more questions can be framed frame up to almost 25 to 50 questions before you start a survey or an interview and then keep on asking this in order to get the answers and the way in which it is answered is recorded um, in a situation where it becomes a simulation and the recorded thing is played back and there with the teacher you can discuss as to what problems were there in the questions what problems were there grammatically speaking in the answers and where they have done extremely well get appreciation and that is how you can pick up the language effectively what do you think you know any picture could be flashed up like a picture that i have flashed on your screen a man is standing in the middle of the road with his suitcase or briefcase so obviously he is going to a place or finding out a place to go to some place and he is standing exactly in the middle where he has got three routes where does he want to go and how does he go so what do you think is just flash a card and each person can come out with different answers he could be a person going for an interview and is searching for his way out he could be going for uh, into a new place landed in a new place and searching for his for a hotel 
He could be a place who is searching for your house. He could be a person who is standing exactly in the Nanded bus stand searching for the way to go to SRTM UN. It could be anything. So each student or each person can come out with a story of his own looking at the picture and make them talk. Speaking skill after all is a skill that would help you to talk. And anything that would make you talk will definitely be helpful. Answer the question. In the earlier flash, I have shown only a picture. In this, a picture is there and some question is asked. The question here that is asked is, what should I do if I am sick? Or think I may have been exposed to COVID-19 in the given situation. Now you could come out immediately with a number of answers. Number one, you become home quarantine. Number two, you consult your doctor immediately. A third person might say that go to the hospital, check yourself and if it is positive, get yourself you know, admitted in the hospital. Number four, get the proper medication with due consultation of a medical practitioner. So, and if nothing is available, maybe you could just become home quarantine and on phone you could contact your doctor, call the doctor to your house and get yourself examined and take the medicines and start administering the medicines effectively. And if small children are there, old people are there, get yourself room quarantined, not even home quarantined. Quarantine for 7 days to 15 days. After that, you get yourself tested. So, whatever knowledge you have about this corona and COVID-19 students could come out with and speaking about it. Dialogues and role plays are some beautiful ways in which you can get yourself acquainted with developing the speaking skill. The dialogues can be printed dialogues that are given to them where only two students, where the teacher reads it as a model and then the students will come out one playing the part of A and the other playing the part of B. Each will be having the dialogue and will be just speaking it out which will be a guided role play. Good morning. Is there anything I can do for you? A says. B says, yes, please. I want to buy a new t-shirt. I think you will like this one. Green is very popular nowadays. I like green very much. By the way, what is the size of it? It is medium. B says, that's lovely. How much is this? And it costs $99.50. Oh, that is a little expensive. Do you have a cheaper one? A says, sorry, I'm afraid not, sir. What a pity, if it is cheaper, I will take it. Thank you anyway. A says, you're welcome. Now, you can have a number of questions based upon this dialogue. Where is the dialogue going on? The answer could be, it's a cloth shop which sells, which sells t-shirts. What is the color of the t-shirt that is shown by A to B? It's a green one. What is the size of it? Medium. How much does it cost? $99.50. Is the customer happy? No, he is not happy because it says it is expensive and he wanted a cheaper one. Do you think that the shop has a cheaper one? No, it doesn't have. That's why the uh, shopkeeper or maybe the salesman says, sorry, I'm afraid I don't have. What does uh, the customer say then? Will he buy it? No, he did not buy. If it were cheaper, he could have bought. So he says thank you and goes off. So you can ask a number of questions, you can go for role plays where one becomes A and the other becomes B. You can convert this American because it is $99.50, maybe in an American context or a European context it is going on. You can convert this into Indian context and ask your students to play the roles. Or you can completely simulate a situation. Imagine that you have gone into, a, into uh, the Nanded Square mall and you have entered into a cloth store and simulate the dialogue. In simulation, you don't have anything in hand. No ready-made dialogues are given to you. So one becomes the customer uh, and the other becomes the salesman and the dialogue goes on. A dialogue goes on in a place where the customer buys you know, a t-shirt and a trouser and a dialogue where a customer does not buy a t-shirt. So both you can simulate. So it could be guided, it could be simulated and with role plays, it gives you much freedom to use the language according to your own way. You can develop the dialogues, you can crisscross the dialogues, whereupon the dialogue of uh, you know, a cloth store is mixed with a dialogue uh, in a medical store. And you can ask your students to separate them and make the appropriate dialogues. It's fun playing with these dialogues. 
you can ask them to role play and you can ask them to simulate the dialogues many a times uh, for role playing is a fun way for students to gain perspective about other points of view by getting into the shoes of others because you literally become a shopkeeper or you literally become a customer you literally become a municipal authority you literally become a a citizen uh, you know talking about uh, whatever you want so teach the basics of role play to exaggerate and to have fun all right it is not always a serious type of dialogue that goes on add little element of fun and mirth into it in terms of dialogues and in terms of a language also when students are ready to discuss the problem ask them to describe it as a script who said what who did what and then what happened so everything is to be analyzed first and then uh, call the volunteers the volunteers who would play the role of a and b and c and how many ever you want to whoever will play the role play and um, the script will be described to them first and then they are not they themselves but they become and start playing the roles of those people allow about 60 seconds to you know 2 minutes to for the role play to get into the shoes of them and then start the role play and follow up by brainstorming of the solutions to the problem and later discussing after the role play is over always discuss whatever problems were been faced by them in terms of using the language in terms of grammar in terms of pronunciation uh, or in terms of the dialogues that can be used in place of the dialogues that were being used and explain them as to how this dialogue can become effective and efficient give them various situations like between a doctor and a patient between a teacher and a student a uh, post office clerk and customer shopkeeper and customer municipality clerk and citizen a manager and an office uh, and a worker in the factory an office between the manager and the clerk it could be anything sky could be the limit for imagining the role plays and simulations that you can do with it many a times giving problems verbal problems um, or maybe you know audio visual problems like this also can help you to make your students think and come out with their answers supposing the problem is that a father left 17 camels as an asset for his three sons when the father passed away his sons opened up the will the will of the father stated that the eldest son should get uh, half of the 17 camels that he has the middle son should get one third of the 17 camels and the youngest son should be given one ninth of the nine seven camels 17 camels that he has as it is not possible to divide 17 into half or 17 by 3 or 17 by 9 the sons started to fight with each other how will you solve the problem how will you divide the camels among the sons now you could think about it give them some time you could think about it and come down with the answers because it is a video that i am making i'll give you the answer for only this problem but the rest of the problems you could think of and come back to me in the off class in the offline class now as a judge i have been over there and i have a camel of mine so i add my camel to the 17 camels which would make the total into 18 half of 18 you know is is 9 uh, uh, so the first son will get 9 camels one third of 18 is 6 so the second son will get 6 camels and one ninth of 18 will be two camels so the third son will get two camels so 9 plus 6 15 plus 2 17 their 17 camels are distributed and the last camel that is remaining is my camel anyway so i'll take my camel and come back that is how i distribute so it requires much struggle in the mind to think about it you can allow the students to talk among themselves the only rule is that they should be talking only in english not in the mother tongue so you can allow them to use uh, paper and pencil talk among themselves using english language and come out with the answers to the problems like these it could be problems like help the man on the boat move number 1 wolf sheep and cabbage across the river each move attaches to only one animal or object when the man is not nearby the wolf will eat the sheep the sheep will eat the cabbage so how are you going to solve this problem so a man has got a wolf a sheep and a cabbage and a boat and he has to see that within the boat sitting in the boat he can take only one animal or one object at a time from this side to that side how is he going to manage because in the absence of the man the sheep will eat the cabbage 
and the wolf will eat the sheep. Can you guess the answer? Okay, let me give the answer to this as well. Imagine that the wolf, the sheep, the cabbage and the man were on one side of the river. First, the man will sit in the boat with the sheep and take the sheep towards the other side as you could see in the picture and leave the sheep there and come back empty. He would come empty and take the cabbage and then cross the river. Put the cabbage there but put the sheep back into the boat and come this side. Now leave the sheep this side and take the wolf with him and cross the river and leave the wolf along with the cabbage on the other side. Is it alright? Then come back empty. Then take the sheep and cross. The wolf and the cabbage were already crossed. Now the sheep is crossing and that's how he could see that all the three along with he himself have crossed the river. Isn't it interesting? Problems like these, picture problems like these or verbal problems like these could be explained to the students and let the students think in English. Let them talk among themselves in English. Let them refer to any book or any pencil or any paper in English. Write anything in English. Thereby, they'll be using the language and ultimately come out to speak their answer. Puzzles like these, mathematical puzzles like these also could be given. Um, guess the missing number or in the grid or in the circle. Look at the bottom one. A boy and a doctor were fishing. The boy was the doctor's son, but the doctor was not the boy's father. Who is the doctor? You must have heard about all these puzzles, verbal problems in your way back school days. It is fun to revise them and go uh, across these puzzles using the language and solving them. The number puzzles you can solve because it requires some writing up. But the puzzle that you have in the third section, a boy and a doctor were fishing. The boy was doctor's son and the doctor was not boy's father. Who is the doctor? Can it be? Can the doctor be the boy's mother then? That is the answer. That's right. How interesting it is. Solving the puzzle like Sudoku. You know, filling the numbers and explaining how you have solved it. Using the language is very interesting way of making them speak. Now, solving the Sudoku puzzle itself is interesting. Once the puzzle is solved, everything stepwise is to be explained by the person to the class. Thereby, you will be using ample of vocabulary and language. Word search are some beautiful ways of, like already the words are given to you on the right, on the left side. Did you see them? Pencil, ear, rainy, shoulders, window, dad, windy, painting, notebook, winter, brother, desk, dig, July, dinosaur, mouth, sun, sister, Friday and me. These are the words that are already given to you. These words are to be searched in the grid that is given to you on the right side. So you could, and the, the moment you have finished, you could start explaining as to which word is where, in the which row, which line, etc., which column, so that you will be using the language to explain it. Opinion giving is another interesting technique of picking up the speaking skill. Opinion giving is you'll give a situation and ask them a question and ask for queries as to how would you react what your opinion is and how would you react in that. Say for example, your grandmother who is very old and very fond of you makes a dish of milk sweets for you. You tell your grandmother that the dish was marvelous even though you hate milk sweets. Now here in this situation, are you becoming a liar because you hate them? Or are you trying to please your grandmother? What is your opinion? What would you do? And how would you justify your action? Each one could be coming out, you know, with different answers and different justifications and thereby using the language. Or supposing uh, somebody asks you, you see a close friend of yours stealing a beautiful frame from your classmate's bag. The classmate complains to the teacher. The teacher asks the class if they know anything about it. What would you do? Would you tell the teacher that you have seen your very close friend stealing and thereby establishing him as a thief in the class in front of everybody? Or you would um, counsel your close friend in person and ask him to give it back. 
or if you don't know what to do and don't want to insult your friend you would go to the teacher in person and say that you know but you want the teacher to come out somehow counsel the friend what exactly would you do each one of you can come out with each different answers and many more and use the language and express it asking for experiences is one wonderful way of making people speak what do you do on sunday you know a monday like this or a saturday like this where you are asked a question what what are your plans of doing on sunday each one will be coming out with different answers somebody who is going for a trip somebody is just relaxing in the house somebody wants to watch a film that he wanted to wish somebody maybe is going for a trip or a tour somebody is playing a cricket match somebody is uh, is has determined to uh, party with his friends it could be anything or somebody is planning to write something so experiences knowing is very wonderful way of making them speak ravi you were ill for two days can you tell us what happened how did you spend those two days at home so he would say that he enjoyed being on the bed uh, maybe with his family and all though in spite of the fact that you know he was ill and he was not keeping a good health but still he enjoyed with his family and had a lovely time or somebody would say that he is admitted into the hospital somebody would say that you know it you could come out with as many experiences as you as many people they are rainu you went to hyderabad for your cousin's wedding let us know your experiences on the train and the wedding you can have a north indian wedding you can have a punjabi wedding you can have a south indian wedding you can have um, uh, different types of wedding or a bengali wedding or a gujarati wedding and how did you travel you can travel by air by car or by road or by bus or a train you can narrate your experiences there new people are you have met with and what exactly were your experiences with them you can talk anything and keep on asking the questions related to you can comment upon the cuisine the food that is made you can comment upon the traditions that are maintained you can comment upon the songs that were sung and dances that were made you can comment upon anything or you can comment upon even christian wedding or you know uh, or a, or a hindu wedding anything you can comment upon depending upon the number of people so many will be your experiences so the experience telling is one beautiful way of making people speak another a technique of making people speak is asking about their ambitions and dreams it's an open ended activity and it could be anything what would you like to become where, where would you like to go in the vacations what would you like to buy for your birthday share your dream with the class share your ambition with the class share your um, you know wish or ambition that was fulfilled till now and which is still unfulfilled how would you plan for it all these are open ended questions and open ended answers which can have as many number of students or as many number of audiences as many questions and answers that could be possible you could just ask your class or audience to talk about your inspiration for some the cricketers are inspiration for some uh, maybe james bond is the inspiration for some einstein is the inspiration for some steve jobs is the inspiration ask them about their source of inspiration and ask them to read about them and talk about them this is one beautiful way of you know motivating them ideas and suggestions could be one of the ways of making them think creatively and constructively and also use the language to speak say for example the first picture shows about the rivers and the forest how would you go ahead for solving the problem of rivers and deforestation the rivers are getting dried up what are your plans as a youth how can you see that you know india again becomes a land of rivers and a land of trees deforestation has increased in population and deforestation and converting forests into uh, habitation um, has become a very common phenomenon nowadays because of which we are facing a number of climatic and environmental issues how can you solve this problem what are your ways of solving the problem of rivers and waters and what are your uh, notions and uh, ideas and suggestions for uh, conserving the forests tree plantation green revolution what are your ideas about it youth empowerment 
what problems the Indian youth is nowadays facing and how can you empower them to solve these problems. It could be a drug addiction, it could be smoking, it could be drinking, it could be pubbing, or it could be um, uh, depression, suicides, what a number of problems, unemployment, um, save the girl child. So all these could be the various problems that the society is facing right now. Or COVID-19 and the future of youth or graduates, future of graduates, where no um, uh, jobs are there. Um, students are in a bewilderment. Students are in a um, confusion as to what their future is going to be, how to proceed, what to do. The degree is in hand and you cannot go out and there are no jobs even if you go out. And in this COVID situation, the situation is even more bad. So what exactly are your thoughts, your ideas, your suggestions? Uh, should they be going for entrepreneurship? Should they, should they be uh, going for um, cottage industries? What exactly your ideas to meet with the situation? So these are some beautiful ways in which people participate into speaking. It's not that in the very first attempt itself they participate, but over the uh, practice, you know, they keep on uh, expressing themselves. Uh, maybe sometimes not very constructive, sometimes taking the help of the mother tongue or sometimes relying on uh, code switching and code mixing and slowly helping them to come down to the expression in English will definitely help them to pick up the speaking skills. So if you look at the speeches of spoken English, letters and sounds, of course, are the important step from which we have to start. Then move ahead to spellings and pronunciation and their proper understanding for a language like English. Understand what silent letters are. Contractions and question tags work in English. Confusables like homophones and uh, homophones and so on and so forth. Foreign words that are used very commonly in English. Word accent and intonation. Identify the difference between spoken and written variation. In written, vari written variety, you should have a complete sentence being made. And in spoken variety, it's not necessary that you have to complete. Are you coming to the market with me? You can just say yes. You can say, oh, I'm busy. But in written communication, yes, I intend to come to. No, I'm not coming to the market. So you have to complete the sentences and expressions in written communication. Whereas in the spoken aspect, you can just leave and it can be understood. So understand the features of the spoken English like the spoken variety and the written variety are quite different and in spoken variety more contractions are used and tags are used and more colloquial expressions are used but in the written part it is more uh, formal variety that has been used. So if you look at the problems of speaking English the number one problem is fear of committing mistakes. Um, what if I commit mistake after I have become, after I've come into post-graduation, I've come into graduation, I'm a graduate already, I'm a post-graduate already. Uh, what if I commit mistake, grammatically speaking or phonetically speaking? People might laugh at me. All these are different, you know, inhibitions that is, that is strengthening anglophobia among the youth. Feel free. It is just a language. It is just a means of communication. And your communication is what is important and not your grammar part. That's very important to understand at the first step. So feel free and start talking. The very reason why a child who is in the school level in English medium at the first standard or second standard uh, speaks English and slowly increases the fluency of English and also grammaticality of English uh, for an English medium goer uh, is that he starts speaking. Whatever English, even if it's a butler English, he has to use English. Otherwise, he has to pay the fines to the teacher. If he uses a single mother tongue word, he has to pay a fine to the school authorities. And so, doesn't want to pay fine. You have to speak English, whatever way you like or whatever way you get. Slowly, you go to the grammaticality of it. You tend to understand it. And then, once the fluency is there, the accuracy automatically comes, as Krishan says. But in the pretext of making the accurate sentences, the fluency is never is picked up. So go for the fluency first. Start speaking. Keep all your fears aside. Keep start speaking. Whatever way you get. And slowly you can improvise it. The second problem that you face is non-availability of words to express the feelings. This many a speakers do face. You know what is to be answered for the question that is asked to you in your mother tongue, 
but you fail to answer it in English because you don't find the suitable words. For this, we have suggested a number of techniques. Get yourself acquainted with the vocabulary then. Who is stopping us? If we have not picked up the vocabulary at the school level or at the initial levels of learning, this is the right time. Never it is late. The moment we understand what the problem is that we are falling short of words to express English, automatically start learning the vocabulary items. Go back to your school books and pick up all the vocabulary. Now doing with the school books is a fun. Now taking up the first standard book and second standard book and going to the fifth and sixth and eighth and tenth and twelfth standard books is a fun. Do all the vocabulary items and lessons and grammar part at the school level. Now you can do away with the no span of time and enjoying them and understanding them. Then you were not happy with the books, but now you will be very happy with the books. Doing the same books again will definitely help you pick up all the vocabulary that you did not pick up when you were at the school level. Now you can pick up the vocabulary. Now along with that, also start reading more number of books, read newspapers, read, read uh, stories. Get yourself acquainted with newspapers, novels and stories. Watch films and dramas. That is fun. In spite of the fact that you start wondering that you are not able to follow any of the dialogues in the dramas and films in the initial position, don't lose heart. The only thing that is required is sustenance. Even though you are not following the film, you at least can watch the film. Watch the characters moving about and action being done. Slowly concentrate and uh, concentrate to listen. The more you concentrate to listen, it is after all the same language that we have been learning for the last 15 years. Remember? It's not something new. It's only that their expressions are different and the pronunciation is different. Their speed is more. Slowly start concentrating on picking up the sounds that you are making and you definitely one day. Maybe for the first film, you could not follow even a single dialogue. Second, third, fifth, you started little following it. Tenth, maybe half of it. And the 50th film, you definitely will follow. Remember, you have finished watching 50 films. And if you are a literature student and you are watching literature films or literary films, you have finished reading 50 books also, remember, which will be useful for you for your MPSC, UPSC also to understand the text or maybe crack in your net set also. So the advantages that you have, even for things like watching films and dramas, is multiple. Number one, you pick up the language, vocabulary. And number two, you also understand what is there in the text, which is helpful for you to crack net set and also to go for UPSC and PSC examinations. The third problem is difference in pronunciation in syntax. Learn the language systematically, starting from phonology till your syntax, semantics and pragmatics, including social linguistics. So you start with phonology, then morphology, then syntax, then semantics. Pragmatics. These five are very, very essential to make your hand work with the language. The additional one that you will be doing is the society part. The, the social linguistics, speech acts, speech events, speech um, community and the language itself completely. So all the ten fingers are open, one for you and one for the society. Everything is working in harmony. You automatically have picked up the language. Practice makes man perfect. Believe me? And you keep on practicing. Keep on practicing. There is no limit to it. There is no end to learning a language. So techniques to improve the language uh, in, with respect to speaking skills is expand your vocabulary. Learn new words every day. That's a, that's a written and underlined statement for you to pick up the language. I will improve my pronunciation by picking up right phonology and practicing it well. I will learn the natural flow of English and maintain the coherence, cohesion, linkings, stress and rhythm. I will build English speaking confidence. One way of improving the confidence that I have tried and I keep on sharing with all of you is that keep one time in your entire 24 day schedule, some two hours, preferably in the evening when you are relaxed, when everybody has come back from the schools and colleges and when everybody is relaxed. Keep the two hours and see that you talk only and only in English. All of you should be speaking only in English. Your mother, your father, your brothers and sisters, everybody should be speaking only in English. You might say my mother don't know English at all. Doesn't matter. The little English that she knows, the little vocabulary that she knows. Cooking, cooker, 
cooking roti stove kitchen you understand what she wants to say calling bell see you understand what she wants to say so even if you don't know anything at all of english vocabulary at least 10% of english vocabulary is digested in our blood thanks to the british ruling india for 200 years so whatever language you know whatever vocabulary you know right from your youngest of the brothers to the oldest of your person in the family use english for 2 hours continuously speak and speak and speak only in english sometimes it looks very funny sometimes you feel like laughing sometimes you look very artificial let it be for 6 months to 1 year you practice and believe me by the end of this academic year it's my guarantee that you pick up the language effectively and speaking skills are definitely sharpened that's the only way to speak build english speaking confidence speech shadowing pick your favorite video with subtitles speech shadowing is any video with subtitles listen to it many times reading the subtitles imitate the narrator sentence by sentence now this is very artificial many a times to imitate others speech but this is one way of picking up the language effectively and then after imitation then you start you know telling in the in the in the same way with this, with many more vocabulary and much new expression self talk self talk is talking to yourself so stay in your own room in your reading room close it nowadays the android mobiles will do the function of recording so record with your audio and your video play it again to listen to your video for the body language that you are maintaining and to listen to your video along with the speech for the language that you are maintaining so wherever you feel that it is not appropriate try to change it wherever you feel it is good pat yourself and appreciate yourself and go ahead with some other the topic every day record at least for 5 minutes that is a beautiful way of improving your speaking skill self talk is a very wonderful way and another interesting way to improve the speaking skills is the technique of thinking in english most of the second language and third language learners normally think in their respective mother tongue and translate it into english don't do that that could be helpful for you in the initial stages but the best way of picking up the speaking skills is to think in english you cannot expect to think in one language and translate into another language and express because translation always fecundates imagination and true translation is really funny many a times um it loses its grammar it loses its beauty it loses the decorum and decency of a language and so learn to think in english we le- can learn to think in english the moment we are decided from inside to pick up the language we are acquainted with you know the uh, listening techniques and speaking techniques and reading and writing techniques also that we'll be discussing in the future videos to come and once we are acquainted with all these techniques and we are really self motivated to pick up the language nobody will stop us to think in english and express in english effectively and efficiently another very interesting way of speak developing speaking skills is to listen to a story or read a story in english or maybe in any other language in your mother tongue and narrate it to somebody to your friend or to anybody in english narrate it in different language read in marathi and narrate it in english or read in english and narrate it in english it could be anything the, or narrate about or describe an incident or anecdote in your life that you have experienced to others all these are various techniques of using the language frequently practice to improve your english speaking skills if you really want to swim you cannot learn it by reading it in a book but you have to plunge into the waters maybe beat your hands and legs maybe get drowned and helped by your coach two or three times practice it enough for for reasonable amount of time and then become a swimmer and similarly then become a speaker it is only practice that makes man perfect so you should be motivated you should be acquainted with the rules of the language you also should practice it and only then you can become a very good speaker nobody stops us keep on listening to great speeches take the inspiration from them 
how are they beginning the speech how are they ending the speech what body language is maintained by them what vocabulary items are expressed by them make a note of it understand them and then use it in your speech as well nobody stops us then to become the world speaker i wish you all the very best to become the world speakers and i look forward to listen to all of you as wonderful speakers in the future years to come thank you very much for having a patient listening and trying to understand the speaking skill and the techniques of developing speaking skill bye for now and stay tuned for the next videos